All right, let's get going. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, waking up out of your food coma. I hope you all had some caffeine. My name is Chris Berger. I'm a, technology, uh, I'm a, I'm a technologist, or rather, at Intel for all of uh, two and a half weeks now. Um, and I work in the software-defined uh, networking division, which is a newly created division at Intel that specifically focuses on on enabling this, this new trend in data centers and also how you basically get a packet from A to B. Actually, it would be good to get maybe a little bit of a show of hands. Um, who of you have heard of software-defined networking and network function virtualization, or NFV, before? OK. OK, good. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is how these big transformational trends in the industry actually relate to NF, uh, N NGINX. And, and first, let me start off by, um, oops, giving a little bit of uh, kind of uh, perspective. And you know, you've all seen these kind of uh, market analysis slides um, um, before, and the trends are pretty obvious, right? There's more and more connected devices. Data is growing very fast. But what this means is that you know workloads. Um, uh, basically have to be optimized and placed for efficiencies because, and one of the key ways to, to do that is, is virtualization, right? So the expected trend is that by 2017, there's going to be seven times more workloads per virtualized server, and, and that's driving the whole technology revolution, in particular in software, that's kind of underpinning NFV and um, as, as well as SDN. And also, more and more workloads actually need to handle encryption traffic growth. And we as Intel actually have a series of both hardware and software solutions that are specifically geared to um, optimize SSL using uh, workloads such as Nginx. The reason why this is being done is pretty straightforward. Um, and it really comes, oops. I don't know. It's really straightforward, and it's it um, it's really centered. It doesn't matter which kind of segment you come uh, you belong to, but what we're finding it it's um, it's really there are demands now that uh, you know you probably experience as well, is, which is to keep operating expenses low, and and also improve the utilization that you have on the workloads. And and nowadays with modern multi-core Xeon um, architectures, it is absolutely possible to virtualize the entire environment, you virtualize um, NGINX on one virtual machine, and right next to it, you have, say, a routing application or a firewall or load balancer all running on the same socket. You know, Intel is actually a company that is pretty good about uh, eating its own dog food and um, uh, when, when we try to enable the industry, uh, we actually put the challenge to, to our own IT organization as well. And as you can imagine, you know, Intel is a company with over 100,000 employees. The, the networks and, and the internal uh, websites are, are pretty big. So I don't know why this is not showing completely, but just some, some basic stats on on what our actually internal IT team came back to um, came back to us and said, you know, before SDN to deploy a virtual network um, could take 32 days. And anybody want to hazard a guess what it was afterwards? 30 minutes. Right. So there are tangible advantages to using SDN technologies in your network if you're looking to, to optimize um, um, uh, you know, how quickly you can deploy networks or how quickly you can uh, deploy new um, technologies on new ACL um, or you know, even something as, as simple as a new DHCP schema. So for those of you who are not that familiar with, with SDN, I just want to summarize the essence um, of SDN and NFV in, in a single point. And it's all about um, changing the industry from using dedicated appliances 
You know, you've all seen these black boxes, no matter whether it's a top of the rack switch um, or a load balancer or routing appliance, an appli application acceleration uh, device, or even some web appliances, email, spam, and like, they are all running on dedicated appliances that have proprietary operating systems that are often not extensible, um, that have dedicated ASICs and, and DSPs, FPGAs, all sorts of different chipsets in them. The main idea <clears throat> of SDN and NFE is to take all of this proprietary stuff and essentially put it on a commercial off-the-shelf server. Right? You use the same kind of hardware that you're already using for your web applications, for storage, um, and, and you utilize the kind of economies of scale that you get by, by using this commercial off-the-shelf hardware and combine it Obviously, you know, coming from the Intel point, with an x86 uh, CPU, with a dedicated NIC silicon that can facilitate things like, such as switching, for example, um, chipsets that have been geared to accelerate, um, as we we're talking before, encryption or crypto um, intense operations, um, and basically enable this on Linux. This is kind of one of the key uh, foundations of in this technology battle for, for in this technology uh, development around SDN and NFE, it's typically around Linux and open source. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. So the key question, you know, whenever uh, such a big transition is happening, so when is it gonna affect me? When is it going to impact my data center, my web servers, my, uh, um, infrastructure that I'm responsible for. And, and there are various companies that um, are uh, starting to trial it out. Uh, we're kind of in 2014, we're at a stage where things are taken from the lab to field trials. Of course, there are companies such as Google, for example, or, or Facebook, you know, the very large websites that have been driving not only the development of SDN and NFE technologies for, for a number of years, but they've also implemented them. But for most enterprises and for most websites, it's kind of, we're getting at to the stage where, where things are now being uh, moved to, say, a proof of concept stage. And, and next year is really the year when um, widespread commercial deployments are expected to begin. But it's, it's not a smooth ride. Of course you can you know, choose to participate in, in the industry by say going with a proprietary solution from companies such as VMware and Microsoft and there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, but most of the companies that are interested in deploying SDN and NFE uh, technologies really want to go the open source route. They really want to go and use the latest standards um, but the problem is that a number of these standards are still incomplete, they're missing. Um, we've done some surveys and you know, a lot of the end users that are running data centers today, they're still a little bit hesitant in rolling out a, an OpenStack or an OpenFlow based kind of network and, and putting their workloads such as Nginx on top of that. Also because it's new technology, some of the trade-offs in terms of investment versus benefits are still immature. As I was talking about earlier, we at Intel, you know, we've run it internally and we were very uh, clearly able to, um, uh, to get very measurable benefits, but for many companies it's still, still a new thing. And the technology is not mature, right? I mean, a lot of these technology com uh, concepts come from, actually just around the corner from Stanford, and, uh, you know, just because a bunch of PhD students initially cooked it up, it doesn't mean that it has gone through the technology maturity curve of, for example, an Nginx, which has existed for, you know, 10 years, and there are 150 million websites that are, that are being driven on it. And this is a valid concern. But, and this is where I'm, I'm talking about a little bit more, is open source and, and various um, IETF and IEEE standards are, are really proliferating. 
And there's a huge community now, not only of vendors, but also um, end users that are jumping on board to um, contribute code, to provide requirements, and also provide test environments. So if you have a standard kind of SDN environment, and again, this is, this is a little bit like the ABCs that we're going through before we actually talk about some of the more detailed stuff. But I wanted to make sure that everybody's on the same page. But if you talk about a, a standard NFE SDN environment, you kind of have three layers that are important. Um, and the first layer is at the top where generally you have the orchestration element. And that's you know, typically based on an open source standard called OpenStack. At the controller layer, there are um, a number of proprietary solutions but the leading open source solution in, in the SDN controllers is another Linux Foundation project called Open Daylight. And with Open Daylight, you, know, you typically use protocols such as OpenFlow to program, for example, the, the flow tables in your virtual switch, right? which then can attach um, quality of service and particular you know, routing preferences or packet switching preferences to your workloads. Um, um, and then you have uh, your nodes. And these nodes can be anything, right? So it could be a cloud server. Um, this is where Nginx would come in. It could be a network appliance. You know, if you go into operator networks, it, it could be uh, um, some packet gateway or um, radio access network. Um, the real... Um, key point is that all of these workloads will be placed on the same kind of commercial off-the-shelf hardware, and they might actually exist in, in a sequence or um, even within the same kind of virtualization environment or with, even within the same hardware environment running on the same socket, on the same chipset, um, on the same you know, Xeon Server, uh, Xeon processor that is capable of supporting, say, 12 cores. So, you know, in an extreme scenario, you might have, you know, one core designated for each kind of workload running in a node. Okay. So what we at Intel are focusing on is really enablement, right? I think it's pretty clear on, on why Intel is interested in driving up so, uh, network function virtualization and SDN, right? It all runs on Intel servers. Um, so um, uh, there's, there's really four ways um, where we are um, enabling the industry, so inviting you know, community members such as you to, to collaborate with us. And I'm going to talk um, about a few of them because I think they're pertinent. First one is um, open source standards, right? So if you want to, if you're interested in you know, co-locating your, engine, uh, your Nginx uh, workload with other typical networking workloads, um, then, uh, you know, becoming fluent in what the, the core industry standards and consortia are is, is critical. And, and Intel, Intel is making a number of contributions there that really emphasize the unique capabilities of our chipsets, particularly with regards to what we call platform awareness. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. We also have um, code, right? So if you are looking for a reference platform saying, you know, I, I really want to try this out. I want to put Nginx on top of KVM and run it in a virtualized environment and maybe have an application delivery controller running on the same uh, node in a separate VM. We actually have, um, you know, a downloadable, freely downloadable, um, what we call open networking platform server um, which is just server software. It will run on you know, the HP Moonshot, so any, any kind of standard Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge server, and we'll, you know, we'll get you going um, in, in rolling out an SDN-compliant kind of reference platform. Um, for vendors, we also have a network builders program, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. And then um, if you have interest in, in actually doing a trial or a... Um, uh, thinking about deployment and uh, unsure about how to, um, to architect your solution, 
And Intel is very engaged in this. And you know, if you have any specific projects that you're thinking about, you know, come and talk to me, and I can certainly point you in the right direction to, to help you um, get this going. As I was telling earlier, right, we're very much incentivized to drive that transformation forward. So now let's do a, like a really, really quick fluency <laughs> test on, on some of the key open source um, standards. Um, they're really important. I'm going to highlight some of them that are probably more important to you guys as, uh, as Nginx uh, users um, than others. But uh, again, there's, um, there's a bunch of them. Network function virtualization, forget about it. This is really telco stuff, unless you are AT&T or um, uh, Verizon. You know, the, the concepts that are being discussed here in Etsy is not that not that critical. OpenStack is absolutely critical because it not only involves compute, but also networking and storage and orchestration of all of these uh, elements in the, in the data center network. And Intel has made a lot of contributions um, it was in OpenStack um, and uh, you know, exposing platform capabilities and delivering particular software packages that uh, allow you to better uh, provide SLAs. For example, if you have customers that insist on, on SLAs um, and you want to orchestrate your, your network using OpenStack, the particular blueprints and patches that you can use to enable that. And you know, another um, you know, just comment on open, OpenStack, I, I was at a Linux conference uh, a couple of months ago, and the executive director of the Linux Foundation you know, made this this quote is like any Linux developer that has OpenStack um, uh, experience, you know, can automatically demand 150k in base salary. It's like the hottest skill right now. If you are really a one of the, if you're really into Linux and, and configuring networks, um, OpenStack expertise is greatly in demand. Um, another new project, and this is kind of being positioned as a you know, as being as hot as OpenStack, probably more in 2015 than, than it is right now, is Open Daylight. And this is where the control element is being um, defined. And, um, you know, we have uh, um, made a number of uh, contributions there to really accelerate virtual switching. So you don't have to use a top of the rack switch um, anymore, but you can actually do and use the vSwitch capabilities um, that have existed for, for quite a while in, in Linux and um, accelerate them for particular applications such as Nginx. Um, IETF uh, service function chaining, um, you don't have to really wor worry about that. But the Open Networking Foundations, um, that's actually an important um, uh, consortium because it defines open flow, which is, again, one of the main protocols that's being used to define um, flow tables in the switch, in the virtual switch. All right, let me just check whether I can put this back into. So when we're um, looking at uh, some of the key contribution areas, you know, what I want to talk about um, and introduce you to, to um, you know, the relevance of why it's, why it's relevant for Nginx, um, we really talk about a couple of things. So first of all, we're talking about enhanced platform awareness. There are a lot of lower layer capabilities that um, allow you to schedule your Nginx workload, for example, more efficiently um, using OpenStack. Um, just by being aware of the capabilities of the Intel NIC card and the capabilities of the, of the chipset. The second area, um, and this is where I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about, is Quick Assist technology. Is there anybody in the room that has heard of Quick Assist technology? All right, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so Quick Assist technology, um, 
is you know, specifically geared to accelerate SSL-dependent workloads. And there's different technologies there that uh, optimize particular asynchronous interaction between uh, um, uh, you know, open SSL and an application such as N Nginx on top of that. So, you know, I talked about um, workload placement. Uh, the, uh, the reality that you now have with, um, uh, with SDN and NFE is that uh, you can place multiple workloads, you know, next to each other all on the same, same hardware. And um, one of the key things that we are enabling with um, uh, using OpenStack is um, optimizing the optimization of resource allocation and management. So how you're putting um, a, or where you're putting a firewall and how it interacts with a controller um, is, is um, you can all influence that with, with OpenStack. And uh, it's probably getting a little bit more into more details than, than, than necessary here, but there are policy rules and capabilities about status and state of the node that are then being proliferated up to the orchestration layer and can be enforced for, to guarantee you know, service level agreements um, at the node layer. Okay, so one of the things that I mentioned earlier is you know, how can you engage and Again, if you're thinking about you know, trying it out, how can I put you know, Nginx uh, on top of a, of a virtualized environment that's using open source, but you don't want to start cobbling all these pieces together, which of course you can, um, but if you, if you don't want to you know, install Fedora and, and download and integrate all of the OpenStack and, and um, open daylight capabilities, uh, one of the key things that we've uh, made available is what we call our open network server architecture. And it's freely available on um, a website called zero1.org, which is Intel's uh, open source repository. And it provides, um, again, a server reference design that will run on an HP, Dell server, on any kind of server. Um, and it it's really aims at accelerating the move to Proof, uh, proof of concept. So if you have further questions on it, come and um, um, ask me about it. I'll tell you more details um, about this. OK, so now let's go a little bit more into, uh, into kind of hard technology. Um, so one of the key, key problems that um, actually Gus from from Nginx talked to me about is, you know, how can he, uh, you know, support websites that have very high um, demands in terms of the number of concurrent HTTPS ses um, sessions or crypto sessions that they need to support. And uh, Intel has actually built uh, technology for that that we call Quick Assist. And from a hardware perspective, it is actually delivered in a, in a NIC card that gets put into, um, into a server. But um, it really focuses on, you know, from this side, on cloud compute storage and, and networking, and then on the enterprise side, on web, mail, secure search, these types of application areas um, to optimize the execution of these workloads. And how we're going to do that, I'm, I'm going to talk a, a little bit more about this. And of course, the, the, the key three things that we're um, focusing on are compression acceleration. So how quickly can you compress the data and, and uh, decompress it, accelerate the pa packet moving, uh, movement, and then also accelerate uh, the, the open SSL uh, interaction. So if you look at it from a, a workload software landscape, uh, we kind of look at it, again, it's a, at the top. Uh, we have three key areas, compression SSL, and then also key exchange. 
Nginx uh, would be a, uh, a workload, um, or could also be Apache, although that's probably a, a bad word here. And uh, Nginx, as the application, is talking to um, OpenSSL and Intel's providing asynchronous extensions to really optimize the performance. And we have uh, a bunch of uh, um, additional performance data on this, but we can get uh, an order of magnitude higher um, SSL encrypt and decrypt performance using um, um, Quick Assist, the Quick Assist API and the associated engines. And a lot of the software is actually available in open source as well. So it's not just uh, dependent on uh, you know, coming to Intel and, or going to a particular vendor. You can actually download the software um, yourself. So in terms of you know, some of the key um, technologies here, uh, so key performance parameters, they're here. I'm going to explain them a little bit later. But tying it back into the, the whole um, SDN and, and NFV story, Nginx is essentially just a workload, right? Running on top um, of uh, the virtualization um, technology, primarily KVM if it's Linux. And then if you're using um, technologies such as Quick Assist, they primarily run in user space to accelerate the, uh, uh, the crypto and then the interaction with the open SSL um, API leads into uh, Nginx directly. Now, why is this meaningful? Is, you know, we have a whole bunch of performance data, but depending on the um, algorithm, you know, we've measured up to um, 40,000 uh, connections per second um, that can be supported on the specific chipset. And whereas, you know, without using Quick Assist, um, my engineering team actually told me it is something in the range of maybe 1,000 connections a second or several hundred um, um, connections per second. So it's really, you can demonstrate the increase in application performance by using Quick Assist. And you can do that, of course, just in a physical environment, just running it on a separate server. Um, but now this capability can also be deployed in a virtualized uh, uh, network. All right. So um, again, a couple of key points. Um, open source knowledge and standards are really critical if you are thinking about using SDN and NFE. Um, I've you know, given you kind of a brief primer of, of the key ones, OpenStack, OpenDaylight, and OpenFlow. Um, and uh, you know, from an Intel perspective, we're a leading contributor, and we're pu putting everything in open source, right? So everybody can look at it, review it, and, and use it. And you know, once it's an open source, leading commercial um, operating system vendors, such as Red Hat and Ubuntu, typically pick it up and then make it available if you want to go that way. Uh, we have an ecosystem program as well that um, actually is utilizing a lot of this technology. So if you, you know, in the previous discussion, we had a gentleman that is using a lot of F5 load balancers um, in front of his Nginx uh, um, infrastructure. Um, they're actually using you know, a lot of Intel technology and chipsets as well, as well as some of our data plane acceleration capabilities to um, implement uh, SDN on commercial um, off-the-shelf um, hardware, really. And you know, the assertion that we're making is that uh, Nginx is SDN and NFE ready. Right? You don't have to go on, continue going in with this mindset that you have to deploy a physical server to run Nginx. If you are thinking about virtualization, if you have um, scenarios where you need to increase the performance of your SSL uh, workloads, um, that is actually available and ready on Intel reference platforms. And we can point you in the right way for those. So the 
call to action is, is pretty simple. Um, if you are, want to learn more, there's a little website here. If you have a project that you may want to kick off and, uh, and have been thinking about how to use Nginx uh, in an SDN and NFE um, scenario, come and talk to us. All right, any questions? All right, well, and thank you.